Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to be going through the top 5 formulas in Microsoft Excel to help you get a head start in the new year. Before we get into our formulas, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. That way you won't miss any upcoming tutorials in the future. Our first formula on the list is XLOOKUP. In this worksheet, we have two datasets. One dataset is the main one, and the other one is a lookup dataset. Take note that both datasets share an employee ID column. Now what we want to do is fill in the green columns here by retrieving the information from the lookup dataset. So let's go ahead and enter in our XLOOKUP formula and go through its arguments. So the first argument is the lookup value, and this is going to be the value that we want to find in our lookup dataset. Now because both datasets contain employee IDs, we can use the employee ID as our lookup value. So I'm just going to select this cell here for the first employee ID. Now the lookup array is a cell range that contains our lookup value. And because we're looking up the employee ID, our lookup array is just going to be this cell range here. And we just want to make sure that we press the F4 key to lock that cell reference into place. Now the return array is going to be the cell range that contains the information that we're trying to retrieve. So in this case, we're trying to return the start date. So we just want to select this cell range here. And then we just have to make sure to press the F4 key here as well to lock that cell reference into place. Now we can go ahead and press the enter key. And then we get a start date returned to us. And now we can copy this formula down to see how it looks for the rest of the employees. So what we can see here are a couple errors appearing, and that's because the employee IDs just actually can't be found in our lookup dataset. Now what sets XLOOKUP apart from other lookup formulas is that it can handle errors internally. Going back into our formula, we can go ahead and enter in some information into its next argument in this if not found argument. So here, I'm going to enter in a string of text that just says investigate. Then press enter. And then we'll copy this formula down. And now we get the words investigate shown instead of errors. And now we've successfully brought in the start date for each of the employees. Now we could repeat this again to fill in the salary column, but something that I find really cool about XLOOKUP is that we can return multiple results at once. Going back into our formula, what I can do is adjust this return array argument. And right now it's referencing a single column but I can expand this cell reference to include the salary column and then press the enter key. And now not only do we get the start date returned to us, we also get the salary returned to us too. And then from here, we can just copy this formula down. And now we get the start date and salary returned to us for all employees. The next formula here is the if formula. Now one of the main uses of the if formula is to categorize data based on logical tests or in other words, conditions. In this worksheet, we have a data set here that contains a list of students along with the class they're taking and their grade. What we want to do here is categorize the students based on their grades. So in this example, for students with a grade greater than or equal to 80, we want to categorize them as high achievers. And if not, we want to categorize them as standard. So let's go ahead and enter in the if formula. And let's go through its arguments. So this first one is the logical test. So this is where we want to check to see if the grade is greater than or equal to 80. So let's just select this cell here. Then we'll do the greater than symbol and then the equal sign. And then we'll type in 80. Now the value of true argument is what we want to return if the logical test is true. So if the number is greater than 80, we want to write the word high achiever. Now the value of false argument is what we want to return if the logical test returns false. So in this case, we're going to write the word standard. Now let's press enter. And now because Alice had a grade of 90, she gets categorized as a high achiever. Now let's copy this formula down and see how it looks for the rest of the students. So it looks like it worked pretty well. Now what's cool about the if formula is that you can nest multiple if formulas within each other to add more categories, let's say. Let's say that we want to add one more category for exceptional students, which is when a student's grade is greater than or equal to 90. So going back into our formula, we can enter in another if formula. And our logical test is going to be if the grade is greater than or equal to 90. And then if that returns true, then we want to write the word exceptional. 
And then if the logical test is false, then we want it to go and revert back to our original formula. So let's just close off this new if formula off, press enter, and now Alice gets the performance level of exceptional. And then we can just copy this formula down for the rest of the students. Our next formula is the filter formula, which is an incredibly powerful tool that makes handling data and extracting it easy. So in this section with the black headers, I've picked the subject using a drop-down list, and I also have the performance level selected. Now in this section with the blue headers, what we want to do is display rows where the subject is equal to the word science. So let's go ahead and enter in our filter formula here and go through its arguments. Now the first argument is the array that we want to filter. So in this case, it's going to be this entire data set. Now the second argument is the array that we want to apply criteria to, which in this case is going to be this cell range here for all the subjects. And then what we want to do here is check to see if in this array of subjects, the value is equal to the subject that we've chosen. So in this case, it's science. So let's press the enter key. And now we only have students shown with the subject science. And because we're using a dropdown, if I change the subject, we can see that the list of students changes as well. So let's go ahead and change it back to science. Now what's cool about the filter formula is that we aren't limited to applying a single criteria. We can actually apply more than one. Now let's say that we want to show students that are in science as well as high achievers. So going back into our formula, what we can do is insert brackets into here as this is one set of conditions. And then we're going to use an asterisk, which represents an and operator. And then we're going to introduce another criteria here. So we're going to select this cell range here for performance level. And then we're going to check to see which ones have the value high achiever in it. So let's go ahead and press the enter key now. And now we get a smaller list, but that's because not only are they taking science, they are also categorized as high achievers. And again, if I wanted to change the subject to, let's say, math, we get a different list that changes automatically. Continuing on, we have the SUMIS formula. This formula is perfect for situations where you need to add up numbers based on multiple criteria. Now in this worksheet, we have a data set that contains sales orders, including information such as product, category, and region. Now what we want to do here is calculate the total sales based on multiple criteria which are going to be the category and region. So let's go ahead and enter in the sum of formula and go through its arguments. So the sum range is going to be the cell range that contains the numbers that we want to add up. So that's just going to be our total sales. Criteria range one is going to be the first cell range we want to apply criteria to. So our first criteria is going to be our category. So in this case, our criteria range one will be this cell range here. Now criteria one is what we want to check with, which is gonna be the category that we have selected in this cell. Criteria range two is gonna be the second cell range we want to apply criteria to. And since our second criteria is gonna be the region, we'll select this cell range here. Now criteria two is what we want to check with, which is gonna be the region that we've selected in this cell. Pressing enter, and then we get the result of 10,000, which we can check by highlighting the cells right here, here, and here. And just like our previous examples, we can go ahead and change the values in some of our criteria. And we can see that the number changes with each change. So now we get a total sales number of 700. Finally, let's talk about Excel's best formula for counting, which is COUNTIFS, as it's the go-to formula used to count things based on multiple criteria. So let's say that we want to count the number of orders for the category appliances in the North region. So let's go ahead and enter in our COUNTIFS formula here and go through its arguments. Now criteria range one is gonna be the first cell that we want to apply criteria to. So similar to the SUMIFS formula, that's gonna be this cell range here. And our criteria one is gonna be the category selected here. 
Criteria range two, just like the sum ifs, is gonna be the second cell range we want to apply criteria to. So since it's region, we can select this cell range here. And then our criteria two will be the region selected in this cell. Now let's go ahead and press the enter key. And then we get the answer three returned to us. And that corresponds to these three rows. And those were the top five formulas in Microsoft Excel to help you get started in the new year. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you all in the next video.